Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a five channel amplifier and subwoofer on this 2017 Mazda CX3. Now, in this video, we're going to show you how to run all the cabling, install this amplifier and subwoofer, and integrate this to the factory audio sound system. Let's get started. Now, one quick thing to note before we jump right on in, this trim level Mazda CX-3 does not have the factory Bose audio sound system. So keep that in mind, This your install will differ if you have the factory Bose, as you'll probably need to bypass the Bose. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. All right, so here we are at the bench now. First and foremost, the star of our install today is gonna be this five channel Alpine amplifier. We don't have all the trim pieces on it yet, um, but this is going to power all four speakers as well as a fifth channel for our subwoofer. And we're doing a kicker, not pictured here, kicker 12 inch and a passive radiator. So this is gonna power everything here. Now to accommodate this, it doesn't have a high level input, so we'll need some sort of line out converter. The customer has opted for an audio control LC7i. So it's gonna take four channels of input and output six channels to our amplifier. That sixth channel, fifth and sixth, are gonna be combined obviously for a mono output there. Now we actually went ahead and got this mounted. We cut a piece of MDF wood, got it all carpeted, and this will actually sit in the trunk area. So there is a false floor in the trunk that sits above a second false floor that sits above the spare tire. Within that cargo cavity, this is a great location to add your amplifier, and the subwoofer will sit just right above it. Now to accommodate this in the, in the vehicle, we need some various wiring bits. The best way for us to integrate this to the factory audio sound system is we picked up a DSP T-harness. Now this T-harness is actually pretty cool. This is the Mazda AX DSP MAZ1 and essentially here comes with the T-harness designed for Axis's digital sound processor. Now we're not doing Axis's digital sound processor here today. So that's what this plug goes to. Essentially this goes between the radio and the main wiring harness and you plug this in its place. This will plug into the radio FM tuner module that's located in the kick panel. And this end will plug into the harness that we removed in the first place, the factory harness for the vehicle. In between here is we can modify this and allow us to rob the signal from the radio, send it to our amplifier, amplify that signal and send it back up and put it right back into the factory harness so it goes to our speakers. The best thing about this is we don't have to cut one factory wire within the vehicle. This is 100% plug and play so down the road if we needed to remove this we unplug our T-harness, pull out our amplifier and wiring and the factory harness will just go right back into the factory radio. So we'll modify this, we'll show you exactly how we're going to do so. To send that signal to and from our amplifier area, we have some nine wire conductor cable. This is a 20 footer, it's 18 gauge copper wiring by Install Bay or technically Metra. And within this, it has all our wiring for inputs and outputs. So we'll show you how we're gonna manage that. Um, 20 feet should be just enough for us in this install. We have an amplifier wiring kit. It's an OFC four gauge kit, which we can also link in the description. And we have some Velcro straps so we can Put those on the bottom of this, it's going to Velcro to the carpet in the trunk and this thing is not going to go anywhere. So let's start running our power wire from our battery area up underneath the hood through the firewall to the trunk area as well. And finally, we need to start prepping our nine conductor cable and our T harness here. Lots to do. Let's go ahead and get started. Here we are underneath the hood. Our battery is located on the driver's side here in the vehicle. We have our positive that's covered by this and our negative. If we open up this cover, that is the stud that we will be using here today to connect our amplifier. Now we're gonna make an inline fuse mount holder, probably put it right here and snag one of these battery mount bolts, and then we'll run that wire through the firewall. Before we jump into that, let's go ahead and find some firewall access and run our wiring through that firewall. We'll build a fuse holder and mount and get everything prepped underneath the hood. Okay, so what we've done here is we found firewall access. We actually pushed a hanger through that firewall access 
and it came out this side. Now we'll show you where we found that access and how we push that on through. We're here up underneath the steering column and on the left hand side is our main grommet there. There is a hole in that grommet. Now there is not a hole on the other side, but with the stiff and sharpness of the hanger, we just punctured a small hole through the other side of the grommet and we pushed this all the way on through. Uh, pretty easy, just took us a few moments. Now be very careful of any of the factory wiring going through this existing grommet as well, as we don't want to damage that in any way. Now, what we need to do at this point is grab our wire, and we hooked it to that hanger, and we taped that up so it can slip through as easily as possible. We're also gonna grab some soap and water and lube this up so it's nice and slippery, so it should pass through that firewall grommet super easily and uh, yeah so that's about it and what we'll do is go top side and pull that wire on through all right so we're here under the hood uh, you just saw us pull the wire on through and off camera here we went ahead and created a fuse mount using one of the studs of our battery bracket and uh, we sandwiched it in there Put an S-bend in that ABS plastic and mounted the fuse holder on there as well. So super nice and solid there. We also split loomed our wire. Now, we also went right to that positive post here on the battery. Made a little cut here so our battery terminal cover can still shut. Um, and obviously the negative is off the battery as we make all these connections because we don't want to cause any short circuits, especially as we're running wire. We don't want to be working with a live wire at any point. So let's head inside the car and continue running that power wire to the trunk area. Now inside the car, obviously this is where our cable comes out through that firewall. We want to run it up underneath these panels here. Um, the panel has enough give. If you want to run, if your gauge is small enough, you can just tuck it up underneath. You don't have to remove it. If it's big enough, probably like ours being a four gauge, we'll probably pop these panels off and still utilize the tuck method where possible just to minimize any damage to our factory trim panels. Looks like clip, 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 and clip. Okay, so we just tucked our wire up underneath that panel, put a zip tie there to keep it in place. Same thing over at the driver's side of here, rear door, pop that panel on off, ran that wire, and we fish it up underneath this panel, under the seat, and then we come out so to Here the in the trunk area, we removed the top false floor, which opens up this cargo area, and obviously underneath this, we have the spare tire. So we're gonna mount our amplifier and audio equipment here in the top right-hand corner. So we'll need enough length of our power wire to come to the positive side of our amp terminal. So again, we'll probably cut just a little of this shorter. Now this allows us to focus our time and attention on now doing the ground. And we're gonna do work on our T-harness and run our inputs and outputs to our amplifier and LC7 here. Okay, so we went ahead and installed our ground there. Uh, we chose that location because it's multiple layers thick of space for the vehicle. Essentially, you can see the spot welds there. So we know that's nice and sturdy. We used the wire brush, cleaned that up, and then um, tapped a 10 millimeter bolt into that location. It's nice and snug. Now, if you didn't want to do that, you can use a seatbelt bolt or something else. You can tear apart some panels to find a factory ground. We just made ours so we can keep our ground cable length nice and short because the amplifier will be just about that location. So that's all done. We got our power and ground all completed. We can put our foam pieces back here up and around the tire and our Let's false. Let's talk floor. about this T-harness by Access, which is going to help us with our speaker wiring both in and out of the factory radio. As we ordered this and we're gonna modify it so we can basically rob the signal and send our amplified signal back into the same harness without cutting a single wire in the factory sound system, which is awesome. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna unloom all this tape here. 
we're going to cut this end off because we don't use the DSP plug. And essentially here, this is the loop that we need. Now this end obviously plugs into the factory tuner. This is going to feed our LC79, ultimately the amplifier, the signal it needs. And then output from that amplifier, we're going to feed back into this plug within the vehicle. That's the cool thing about this T-harness. It also passes through everything else that we don't need to worry about. Um, it won't impact any of the factory functionality. What we're going to do is cut these ends off here, and we have our two runs of nine conductor cable, which is 20 feet in total. We just cut it in half so we can have an input and an output. This is what it looks like with the shielding off. Have all our wiring, and we're essentially going to match an input side, which we've labeled input. The other one's going to be output. The side with the white plug is going to be our input. We're going to solder that in there color for color. And then this is going to feed the LC7i, and then the output, same thing. We'll solder in this side, color for color, and uh, that will start our T-harness. Then we'll run these two lengths of nine wire back to the same trunk area where our power and ground was run. All we need to do is literally plug this in, plug that on in, and we're done. Um, we'll loom it all back up, make it look nice and pretty, but that's the cool thing about something like this. It's down the road if you end up pulling your equipment out and you're ready to sell the vehicle, it's a plug and play. Okay, so we prepped our wiring here, modified the T-harness. I went ahead and cut out the, the DSP piece that we just don't need. That's gone and out of the way. And now, this is all ready to go. So this end originally went to the DSP harness. We don't need it. We cut it off and it actually has all our speaker wire and also has a power constant 12 volt ground black and then accessory red wire that we're going to run to our LC7 to power it. So we just got to extend those wires a little bit longer and then all the speaker wires, the whites, grays, greens, and purples will solder into our input side that we marked input. This will go to our LC7i. We're going to solder all these up. This is going to carry the signal from the factory radio, send it through a nine wire to the LC7i, and then the output from the amplifier is obviously going to be this other set of wire. It's going to come up here, and we're going to connect it to this harness plug, and that'll plug into our output side. This will take the signal to all the doors. Now, these ends that we cut short, we're not going to need because everything's duplicated. Um, we'll just insulate those as we reloom the harness. So at this point of time, let's start soldering things up. Now our nine wire, the ninth wire is remote turn on. Our accessory red wire, that's going to be a remote turn on. We'll connect that into the blue wire of our nine wire here, and that'll carry that remote turn on. And like I said, with the, the yellow and the black, we'll just extend that with extra wire we have here in the shop. All right, so we got all our connections soldered here. This is our output from the amplifier. That'll plug right on there. Nice thing is we can disconnect that if we need to disconnect the output of the amplifier easily right there with that junction. This is all our pass through. And then this side is our signal wire that'll feed the LC7. And we also got that all soldered on as well. We also extended our power ground, which will run along with this to power our LC7i. So, at this time now, we're going to grab our wiring here. We're going to put our heat shrink over it and shrink it down with the heat gun. Our harness here, and this is why we love these T-harnesses. One plugs into the radio, the other one plugs in the harness that originally was in the radio. Um, and this is it. There's all our pass-through wires, and we have this all the way down. Now we hooked our power and ground also into our input and output cables, and this runs the whole length, and essentially the other end will plug into our amplifier and our LC7i and everything there, and it's such a simple, easy plug and play. Look at that. So this is it. We're done here. Let's take this cable, show you where it plugs in, and start prepping and running our wiring All right, so we saw us take out our glove box and we're gonna go up underneath here and that module right up there, you can kind of see it up from this angle too, 
that is our tuner module. That's really the brain of the radio right there. The screen up here on the dash is just the screen. Um, everything actually takes place down here in the tuner module. Um, it may differ if you have earlier models or later models, but for us, our tuner module is there. And you can see our T-harness went into that plug right there. And we unplugged it and plugged its corresponding plug into our harness, just like that. And that's it. That's our connections. How cool is that? Without cutting one wire there in the factory tuner, now we have all this wiring that we can run to our amplifier. So we're really just redirecting the speaker output from the factory tuner to our amplifier, and then we're going to send our own signal back into the car. Now with these, just like we did with the power wire, we're going to run this all the way to the back. Same exact technique as our power wire on the driver's side. Okay, so we started getting our panels back on, just like we did with the power wire. It is all nice and tucked on the factory wiring there. And same technique all the way up. Our wire came out there. We're starting to wire up our amplifier. So we got power and ground. There's a little mount Velcro in place once we're all done. Power and ground, the yellow and black will go to the power and ground on our LC7i. Accessory is also coming through our nine wire. So we'll get that all hooked up. And then we'll hook up our inputs and then RCAs will go to our amplifier. So at this point, it's just a lot of wiring and making our connections, um, but uh, we will come back once those connections are made and we'll review everything one more time just to show you how we've hooked it up here in our install today. So now with our amplifier all hooked up, power grounds are all done, we can go ahead and safely put the negative back on the battery. All right, so we have our amplifier all hooked up, all the terminals are done. Same thing with our LC7i. Looks nice and clean. We went ahead and put wire ferrules on everything there. Really, really short RCAs over to the inputs of the amplifier. So our subwoofer, just so we can do some tuning here. Everything is nice and attached to our board that we went with and zip tied. And it folds away, it'll be nice and clean and plenty of breathing room up underneath this false floor, but at the same time, easily accessible. So. At this moment of the install, we need to go through all our tuning and setup with our LC7i. We're going to go ahead and set our games with our amplifier, and uh, we'll come back once it's all done with the final test. All right, we are done. We got everything cleaned up here, wiped down the M. All the trim pieces are on. It turned out super clean. We just got all our testing done. We set our AccuBase and Threshold set all our gains and outputs with an SMD DD1. Sounds awesome, nice and clean. All right, so we got everything all rebuttoned up here. Nice thing is, we didn't even have to pull the radio on this model. Okay, so we are just about done. We need to put in our false floor and just get everything buttoned up there. Now, if you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. We also did front and rear door speakers on this. So if you want to see those videos in action, check the link in the description. We'll have links down there, which walk you through step-by-step -step on how to install front and rear door speakers on this vehicle. If you like any of the equipment that we saw here in this video, we'll actually link it all down in the description as well for your convenience. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time and we'll see you in the next video.